Hello, my name is Jožek and in this video I show you how to make a combat system using Finite State Machine and the new input system from Unity. In the first part we will see how to set up the player actions, how to set up the animations and how to integrate them in the Finite State Machine. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the second part. So I am here in the editor and I have a player controller which used finite state machine and the new input system from my previous video. You can find the source code in the description. Let's set up the player actions for the new input system. I add a new action called draw weapon. It's of type button, but I change the trigger behavior to press only. Then the binding click on path, listen and press the R key. As interaction I choose tap. For the second part we also need the attack, so I create a new action called attack and choose path, listen, mouse, left button. As interaction I choose again tap. Make sure you press auto save and close the window. As animation I download the Pro Sword and Shield pack from Mixamo. Just download them and make sure you have selected this format binary, the T-Pose, keyframe reduction to none. Download them and import them to Unity. Now select all your animations. And at the import menu go to Rig, animation type humanoid, avatar copy from other avatar and choose whiteboard avatar. Make sure that you use the same avatar than your animator use. Now create a new layer, call it combat layer, click on the icon and set the rate to 1. Make sure the blending mode is to override and we, we don't need a mask. Create a new empty state Call it default state and there's no animation to it. Now we have to set up the animations in the inspector and we can see when we play the animation that the player actually rotates and we don't want that. These are the two animations we use for the player to draw actually the sword or the weapon. We call them player draw run. The first one and we set back into position based upon original for the rotation, the X, Z position and the Y position. Now for the second animation, we call it player draw 2. And again no loop time, we say back, in, back into position and also set this based upon start. We choose original. We drag the two animation into the animator and connect them with a transition. We can see that it's only the first transition and it shouldn't have an exit time so we don't want to the idle animation to end. Now we need a trigger so that we can actually trigger that animation. We call it trigger draw weapon and set uh, the condition to draw weapon. Now the second transition has an exit time, we set it to 1 and the fixed duration to 0 so that he plays the first animation to the end and then the next one is the second. We can see that there's a smooth transition between the first and the second. Now we actually use the locomotion blend tree from the base layer, just copy it and paste it to the combat layer and rename it combat blend tree. Now we can see that we can change with the speed parameter. We can blend between these four states, but the first one the player idle we don't want, so we change it with the player combat idle animation so that we see that the player actually draws a weapon and then he stands in this combat phase. We change the name to player combat idle. Again we change the back into pose based upon original for all three cases. And make sure the loop time is checked. Click apply. 
Then we replace the player idle animation with the player combat idle animation. And we make a transition from the player draw 2 to combat plan 3. And we see that we actually want this animation to end. So we set exit time. When we click now the draw weapon, then the player draws the weapon. However, he stays now in that position. We need now two other animations for the player to pull the weapon again back. These are called the Sheet Sword 1 and Sheet Sword 2 animation. So the first one player Sheet 1, back into position and again based on original. Click apply. Now we see when we play the animation that the character does not rotate. Same for the second animation, we call it player sheet 2 and also break into pose based upon original and click apply. Then we drag and drop the player sheet 1 and 2 into the animator and we make transition between the states. We don't want the first transition to have an exit time but we can trigger it with a sheet weapon trigger. Make sure that the sheet weapon condition is applied. Then the second transition has an exit time. Again we want here the first player sheet 1 animation to be fully played. So we set exit time to 1 with no fixed duration. You can see that we go to the combat plan tree and again to the default state. Now we want to trigger these conditions from player actions and not from the animator. For that we have to open up our state script. We need to define the have a drop weapon action and attack action. We get the input actions by character.player input.action and then the name of the action we defined in the player controls. In our standing state script, we need to define the new boolean draw weapon and down in the handle input function, we trigger the draw weapon action, then we set the draw weapon to true. In the logic update function, we then change the state to the combat state, which is not yet defined, and we trigger the draw weapon trigger from the animator. Let's create that new combat state script and call it combat state. The combat state is very similar to the standing state, however, we need to define a sheet weapon boolean. When the draw weapon action is triggered, we set sheet weapon to true. In the logic update, we then go back to the standing state and we trigger the sheet weapon trigger from the animate. We can now change to the combat state. In the last step, we create an instance of the combat state, like we did for the other states. Now you can see that we can change between the standing state and the combat state just by pressing the button R. We also stay in the combat state while we are moving and the right animations are played. So you made it to the end of the first part. Now in the second part we will see how to instantiate the weapon model with animation events. If you have any questions to this tutorial, please write it down in the description. I respond to every single question. By the way, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. See you then.